Nathan Austin, welcome to the alumni series from Suffolk County Music Service. It's great to have you with us, Nathan. Good to see you again. Uh, you are the second episode in our series, having just done Ben Parry. Obviously, you're at a very different point in your career, um, so, but it will still be really interesting to talk to you and hear your take on some of the questions that we've got to answer, uh, ask you. Yeah, no, big shoes to, big, big shoes to fill with uh, <laughs> Parry being before me, but it's fine. I think I actually probably came to that conclusion in about year 11, probably actually towards the end of GCSEs, um, which is when I started probably getting involved in in more playing stuff as well. Uh, that was when it kind of clicked, clicked for me um, that this is actually something that I really enjoy and this is something that I want to go out and go out and do. Um, but yeah, it, it's quite, I think it's quite late for me sort of coming to it as well, because I didn't start playing anything until year seven. So I'd like, I hadn't done any music until I was in high school. Um, wow. I started playing piano um, and sort of got thrown on electric bass to begin with, and then sort of wanted to get involved with orchestras. So moved to double bass. Um, so yeah, no, I, it was it was quite late on in in my sort of school career that I decided that actually music was something I wanted to do seriously. Great, and and I hope that'll be really encouraging because I'm sure, you know, for Ben it was when he was seven, when he had a particular experience. I think it's great to hear from the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's a, if you've got the drive, then it's kind of it's never too late to start. It's the same same with anything. I think you can sort of you can apply that to anything. But I think especially for me, obviously there are some things that you end up in a slight disadvantage in, and you have to work a little bit harder. But um, yeah, no, I think I, it, it's actually, it's quite nice for, for that to sort of click at that point. Um, and, and like you say, some people obviously start really young, but I, I don't think you need to necessarily. Yeah, I think so. So I, it was around that sort of point that I started getting involved with county level ensembles as well. Um, so before that I'd done, um, the Friday nights with um, with Mr. Tabor uh, in South Suffolk. And, um, okay, so just just to make that clear for for people watching, you're talking about the County Music Service Ensemble program, the county one, which is the top level yes. Suffolk yeah. Youth Orchestra, and then Friday nights are our regional music centres on Friday nights across the county. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. Um, yeah. So it was when I started getting involved with the with the county level stuff, um, and also I. Um, uh, it, I, that's dictated my sixth form choice quite heavily as well, um, because I kind of wanted to get as much experience as possible doing that. So applied for a scholarship at um, Woodbridge School um, and obviously was, was successful with that. So um, that was a really, that for me, it did, it sort of did dictate where I went next from high school. So um but yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think my attitude did change. It definitely made it more serious. It made me have to think about actually what I need to do to to get where I want to be and, and have have those sort of thoughts, even if it's, even if they were quite sort of face value, I, I want to be in music, not necessarily, oh, I want to be a, a player, I want to be a um, a teacher, whatever. I think it's, it's definitely sort of, okay, so I now need to look at where I need to, where I need to go with this and what I need to do. Yeah, so um, for me, where I've come to university was was a, a big one for me. So I took I took two years before I came to university as well because I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go um, straight out of sixth form. So I, I sort of took some time off to begin with, um, and in that time, um, most of it was COVID actually. So <laughs> there wasn't a lot going on, um, but. I sort of kept kept the channels with Suffolk County Music um, as well, so I was still involved in that up until I left for um, left for university. Um, and then, actually, since being at university, that's where I have kind of started doing the most stuff. So I'm at University of Huddersfield, um, and that was 
the the only course that stood out to me because of the amount of stuff that goes on and the flexibility of the course so when i was looking for for courses i wanted something that i could make a course i was going to enjoy and get a degree out of it at the end that was going to let me go into the industry basically mm -hmm. um, and one of the other big things that Huddersfield have that was a draw to me is they've got really, really good business links um, up in Yorkshire. And they also have a lot of stuff going on that's kind of run in collaboration with the department. So the big one is um, Huddersfield Contemporary Music Festival, um, which is the UK's largest contemporary music festival um, and a kind of a must go to if you're in into contemporary music in, in Europe. Um, and this year, actually, I was lucky enough to to work on that um, as a stage crew, um, which was it, that was incredible because it meant that I got to meet. Uh, we had London Sinfonietta, um, Crash Ensemble, um, Ensemble into Contemporian, who are a massive French um, contemporary ensemble. But um, it meant that I got to basically meet all of these incredible musicians as well and network with them while I was doing also a job that I wanted to that I want to go into so um yeah getting involved in that we also have an electric one that's uh, the same sort of thing but not quite as big um so again you get you get involved with that um I've always been into brass standing um as well so coming up to Yorkshire was nice for that and um I actually kind of made a transition from bass into percussion um just because shockingly there's more work with brass bands up here than there is um is with um, orchestras but that as well means that I'm, I'm doing so much playing um, even though it's kind of semi-pro amateur depending on the level you're playing at but the the networking involved with brass banding actually is is ridiculous and especially in percussion um, you're not sort of you're not sort of tied down too much and I, I've got a gig pretty much every weekend with a brass band either my own band or or uh, playing for another band. Um, so again, that that kind of um, kind of swap into the market was was a big one for me in performing. Um, but actually, the the experience that made me kind of figure out what I wanted to do within music was um, working with uh, Britain Peers Arts um, on Opera Festival over the summer, and they did a fantastic scheme. Um, called the Hess Student Scheme, and if you want to get into music, that is, it's it's incredible. It's probably one of my greatest experiences within the sort of musical sphere, um, and it's it's intense. It is intense. So you work the entire festival, start to finish, every day, um, and that for me, I got to I got to do stage crew stuff. I got to do tech stuff. I got to um, do things that I might not have necessarily thought were related to the festival. So like gallery invigilation and stuff like that, um, which is kind of more on the mundane side, but actually doing that and doing it in a professional environment, um, that that really made me sort of hyper-focused on actually, yeah, I want to go into, I, I want to go into sort of orchestral management, um, being sort of, like I say, portfolio musician, that that's what I want to go into. Um, and and yeah, no, that that was sort of the moment where everything kind of fell into place for me, and I was like, actually, this is yeah, this is this is what I want. That's a tough one. That one, I think, like you say, I think when you start doing music, everyone's kind of initial reaction is, oh yeah, I want to perform. That's you know, that's what being a musician is. Um, but actually, I kind of. <laughs> Sounds really sad, really, but um, I've always been involved in the kind of like setting up and putting down of, of stuff um, from from high school. That's just kind of been I've always, always been, you know, moving chairs around, putting stands out, whatever. Um, and so it's always something that, that I've sort of been been doing. And no one really thinks about that side of music, I think, until you get to a until you get to a sort of higher point and then you know, like I say, meeting people that do that for a job and being like, actually, you know, it's slightly more than moving stands and, and chairs around. But totally. that that is it's a completely sort of 
valid career path and and um and yeah that's, like i say meeting people that do that um really sort of showed that up for me um and would you say that was all that was um being one of the hess team yeah yeah it was, definitely, it was definitely a more recent experience for me sort of um <clears throat> sort of shoring that up yeah i think it, it was um i don't think i really properly made that decision until i'd gotten to university um and and sort of had the more the the experiences within the workplace that have come with being university that i i properly have sort of said to myself actually this is this is exactly where i want to be um, and like you said, I think performing will always be something that I want to do. Um, I, I, I love playing. I love, I love music. Um, and I love being a part of that. Um, but I think doing, doing the sort of more administrative side of things um, actually is a career that I can see myself both enjoying and getting experiences out of that are going to stay with me um and being, being a performer is hard being a pro being a pro performer is ridiculously hard um and i'm sort of not under any illusions at all that i'm the best player in the world um but what i do want to do is be involved in music and mm -hmm. and, and actually my kind of skill set is in that logistical side of things so it, it's it's kind of perfect, sure. perfect to, to be involved in that way quite a lot of experiences in especially in music you kind of end up making your own luck and actually just being able to speak to people will land you in a position where you're then like what am i doing how am i here this is amazing yeah um and yeah I, I don't know i think quite a lot of my quite a lot of my gigs and and where i've done stuff um more recently have come out of just talking to people yeah and and being maybe in the right place at the right time but mm -hmm. being you know chatting to to being a good guy everyone and and just like getting to know anyone that's there you know not being i know it comes to it comes to some people easier than others but i think for networking it's it's so powerful just to be a nice person and just to be someone that you know having having a chat with whoever is there and and i think that's that's kind of what got me the the sort of more recent gigs that I've been doing that have that are actual are are actually gigs are are proper um, uh, proper proper music um, have just come out of being like having spoken to someone and then then having passed my name around or um, again not necessarily being the best at what I do but just being someone that is is friendly and uh, willing to learn and willing to speak to everyone and willing to sort of get involved and, and stuck in. Um, so yeah, I think, I think in answer to your question, probably, I probably have been in the right place at the right time for some things. Um, but actually, you kind of make your own luck. And, and it's, it's very much just sort of being friendly and being a, a memorable, memorable face. I spend quite a lot of time away from home <laughs> um, and especially now that I'm university um, obviously West Yorkshire is, is quite far away from Suffolk um, so it means that that actually I haven't spent quite I haven't spent much time with my family um, sort of from from sixth form onwards um, purely because uh, I'd either have gigs or um, I'd be back late from from school or i'm on tour with county orchestra um and now when i'm up here it's like oh christmas especially in banding as well brass banding christmas i'm i'm pretty much i've got solid work now from from now until the 23rd of december so it's um i it's it's kind of impacted my my home life a little bit 
Um, and I feel a little bit sad for, for the amount of time I've been away from home. Um, and I know my mum, uh, my mum likes it when I come home. <laughs> so um, I think it's definitely had an impact on, on uh, sort of people around me. Yeah, no, I don't, what, else have I, what else have I given I up? mean, how do you feel, for instance, that kind of the drive to practice, how has that caused you to have to turn down opportunity, other opportunities that you might have had? Yeah, I think it, it definitely, there gets a point where you're having to make a call of either, oh crap, I've got a technical, technical exam in, in a week's time and that means I'm going to have to, you know, not go to work this week or, or um, not go out tomorrow night. Um, and, but I think one of my, one of my main sort of drives is trying to get that work life balance. And, and I think if you, if you're sort of managing your time, actually that doesn't, the, you don't have to make too many sacrifices in your, in your kind of social life. Um, to to go and go and practice every day. Um, yeah, being able to talk, uh, being able to stumble and 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 blag your way through a conversation, even if you're sort of not really know not really knowing what's going on. Um, <laughs> being able to just sort of like be that person that's there and and have a conversation with someone. Um, it's something that comes quite easily to me. Um, so it definitely that, that I, I've relied on that many a time to, um, <laughs> to, to get what I need. I'm, I'm quite logistically minded. So in my two years out, I, I, I managed, I, I was a manager and, um, sort of part of my responsibilities in that was organizing other people's time, um, which was something that I sort of can just do. Um, and again something that I enjoy doing so the sort of the the logistically the the um kind of logistics side of of my brain is something that um gets used quite a lot actually in in this uh, in in my um musical life and especially actually doing percussiony stuff um I've done a lot, quite a lot of percussion technician um gigs recently which involves obviously moving instruments and loading vans that sort of kind of that, that kind of thing and um you know just kind of planning in your head being able to visualize what's going where what, mm -hmm. you need to, what needs what needs to go where um it's again something that that i uh quite luckily can um can do um so yeah i think but the the main one is definitely my ability to just kind of speak to to anyone and and everyone regardless of sort of you know I don't I'll speak to adults children and people my own age regardless of you know what they're doing why they're there mm -hmm. I'm happy to have a conversation with with anyone and everyone great just do it um <laughs> would be my first first sort of would be my tagline um, For, for everything if you see something and, and you're kind of umming and ahhing just just go for it see what see what see what happens um you know you might not enjoy it it might be a bad gig you might be doing crap crap stuff you might be a bit rubbish but then you know and you won't do it again or it could be incredible it could be the best gig you've ever done and actually you now know that you want to do more stuff like that um so just just sort of taking opportunities whenever they come up um obviously not stretching yourself too thin that would be incredibly poor advice but but you know within reason just having a go at everything that's that's kind of offered to you um and actually using using your human resources around you as well so speaking to teachers speaking to tutors speaking to people like yourself at the county music service you know if you're going to a to a friday night an area ensemble have a chat with the conductor see what's see like see what they're doing in their lives see sort of just getting a feel for how actual musicians do do actual music is is 
actually an invaluable experience. Um, so yeah. Getting the degree was always a means to an end, if that makes sense. Um, okay. I sort of came to university to make links and connections. Um, and that's kind of where I see myself getting where I want to be is 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 knowing knowing those people, uh, being able to sort of get in sort of with those people. So people know who I am, basically. Um, and the other thing that my course offers is a complete sandwich year placement, um, which uh, I'm not 100% on whether I'm going to take that up yet, but that's available to me to go and potentially do a job in arts administration. So effectively a have a year in the industry, right? Have a, have a year in industry. Sure. And, and after that, obviously, I've got a music degree that's got X, Y, and Z with some performance in it. And I've also, on top of that, got a year in industry in the job I want to end up in. So I think that's that alongside the people that I will have met and and sort of gotten to know up here will be sort of my my trump card um, is actually, look, I've done this for a year. And while I was at university, I uh, was doing this alongside my degree as well. So um, yeah, the kind of experiences that I've had outside of my degree is is um, what I hope will will set me apart, basically. Okay. Oh, that is a really good question. Who inspires me? My first piano teacher because she is eccentric um, and loves everything she does um, and is really the person that kind of pushed me into music um, properly. Um, and she, she'll always hold a special place for me um, just purely because of the sort of, she's the one that gave me the, the platform to, to, to do what I want to do basically um and yeah in her own right she's a fantastic musician um, and an incredibly lovely person and i aspire to be aspire to be that when i'm when i'm um coming towards the end of my own career that's that's who i aspire to be like it goes through peaks and troughs mm -hmm. as any good relationship does mm -hmm. um there was a point in sixth form where i doubted whether I did want to go into music or not. Um, coming towards the end of my first year of sixth form, I, I wasn't 100%. And why? Um, I'm not sure. I think, I think it, it would have been after I had looked around at courses and for university and kind of just been like, some, not all of these courses uh, look like I would enjoy every part of it. Um, and I kind of wasn't willing to to throw myself at university just because that's what everyone does. Um, because I didn't, I'd, uh, some of them were, so I'd, I'd looked at universities and I thought the course was incredible, but I didn't like the place. Or, and I looked at other universities where the place was incredible, but the course was just not what I wanted. Um, so I think, like I say, towards the end of my, my lower sixth, start of my upper sixth, that was, a time for me where I wasn't 100% whether it was something I wanted to, to put myself through um, because it is it's hard getting into the music industry is hard and I sort of was under no illusions of that from the beginning as well so when I'd sort of gone and looked around and and had that kind of actually none of these sort of appeal to me in a way that makes me want to go and do it um i uh yeah i i almost did a chemistry degree um luckily i did not <laughs> <laughs> um, um but yeah that that prompted me to have my my sort of two years out um and 
kind of rekindled my um rekindled my my love for it and um yeah when i was when i found the course i was filled that was that done deal it was it was completely set from there yeah great uh that's that's it nathan thank you so much for talking to us it's really good to see you again buddy um, yeah you too I'm, you too i'm absolutely Not... certain that that the uh, some of our students who watch this will find this interesting and helpful and relatable and that's exactly what we wanted so really appreciate your time for joining us on the alumni series and no, best of luck at Huddersfield and hopefully see Thank you, you soon so I'll see you soon wonderful thanks thanks for having me take care see you later nice one